The origins of this fort are shrouded in the mists of history. There are some who believe that the first fort here was built by the Shah Vahanas in the first century AD. However, what is beyond dispute is that by 12th century, the place had become famous as Devagiri. The name was apt because the hillside was studded with temples dedicated to Jain, Buddhist and Hindu deities. The place was prosperous and ruled by Yadav dynasty. This tempted the Delhi sultans to attack it and repeatedly plundered it. The first to do so was Alauddin Khilji. Since then, eight centuries passed and seven dynasties ruled over this fort. The Khiljis were followed by Tughlaqs, Bahmanis, Mughals, Marathas and Asafjahis. It is not surprising at all that there are many ruins in the fort that tell many a colourful tale. Famous fort, earlier known as Devagiri, stands close to Aurangabad in Maharashtra. From a distance, it appears as a huge pagoda carved out of hard rock, covered with a green carpet of moss. Various structures in its compound have been built at different times and seem to mount a fascinating exhibition of architectural styles. This place is a special hobby that it was not built like other places. It was not built. It was carved. It was carved out of one single rock. And this is the reason that it is the strength of it. के डिफेंस पॉइंट ऑफ व्यू से लीजिए आप सिक्योरिटी सेफ्टी पॉइंट ऑफ व्यू से ले लीजिए तो मेरा इंतज़ा ख्याल है कि कोई दूसरा खेल इसकी शायद बराबरी ना करे और यही वजह है कि इसको इन्विंसिबल कहा जाता है यानी एक ऐसा खेला जो नाकबिल तस्खीर है जिसको हम फतेह नहीं कर सकते Battles fought here have more than once changed the course of Indian history. Alauddin Khilji, Muhammad Tukluk, Malik Ambar, Shah Jahan and Aurangzeb attacked it one after another. Those who dwelt within suffered but stoically picked up the threads of their ravaged lives every time. Dolatabad is, is absolutely brilliant in that it perhaps best reflects the layers of construction for centuries, overbuilt and rebuilt, um, and each time more secure than the last. The fort was built in several stages across centuries and has many layers, like the ramparts, commissioned by different rulers who commanded control. There are four rows of ramparts, and the outermost of these, with a thick wall, was built by Malik Ambar. Small narrow gates are located strategically to facilitate entry and exit. The pathways are sharply angled to slow down enemy forces. An old painting depicts the ingenious design of this fort. After crossing the ramparts, the invader confronted another formidable obstacle, the moats, some natural, others man-made. The 
you just imagine this entire fort as only conical huge isolated hill there is no hill around it although it's it's a range of fountains mountains here but this particular piece they have chosen right from selection of the site they are so choosy and careful so it's a fort so criteria is about it has to look as work as a perfect apparatus of the safety and the military there are eight main gates of which only two are in use today a narrow confusing passage weaves its way through the maze of real and fake entrances towers overlooking the route added to the protective armor well armed soldiers deployed there could easily target the invaders The fort at Dalasabad is reckoned among the most difficult forts to conquer in the whole of India. Nature has provided it with wonderful defences. On three sides, it is surrounded by high hills, and it stands itself on a sharply chiselled rock, about which it is said that not even a snake or ant could climb it up. What about man? If somehow an invader crossed these, he was confronted with three parallel rows of ramparts, beyond which lay man-made moats, once upon a time full of bloodthirsty crocodiles and more poisonous snakes. and still beyond lies a dark base where stood guardians of the fort holding boiling water to pour over invaders it truly was a very difficult fort to conquer one could lay it low only with the help of a traitor a wooden drawbridge led to the most terrifying life threatening obstacle An underground tunnel named Andhari was excavated through hard rock to provide a pitch dark passage. Sentinels stood at heights with cauldrons of boiling oil ready to pour on the invaders. Today the visitors negotiate this stretch with the aid of torches. There are many false passages leading to blind alleyways or to a fatal fall in the moat. The tunnel could be filled with toxic smoke to harass those confined in its entrails. passage opened at the other end on the rooftop where the exit point was sealed with a strong iron lid stairs on the side leading up were built much later for the convenience of visitors हम 800 साल पुरानी चीज़ देख रहे हैं और ये वाकई दिमाग को पागल करने वाली चीज़ है आर्किटेक्ट के तौर पे मैं तो कभी कभी पागल हो जाता हूँ ये जब देखता हूँ तो सवेरे अलग दिखती है दोपहर में अलग दिखेगी शाम को अलग दिखेगी
Hundreds of broken statues and remnants of ruins are scattered all over the place. They bear witness to the immensely rich cultural heritage and glorious history of Devgiri and Doltabad. Devgiri Fort is one of the very few forts in India which not just uh, tells us about the war strategies and the battles fought and won in this region but also speaks of the cultural tradition during the Yadav dynasty. It was the golden period for art and culture in this region. Many great uh, literary works, uh, a very famous treatise called Sangeet Ratnakar, which is like a Bible for the musicians and musicologists. And a famous musician, Gopal Nayak, was able to contribute in a great way by composing many new ragas. One of the ragas, which is named after the fort, is Rag Devgiri Bilawal. There is an old Jain temple in the precincts that has a courtyard divided into 25 galleries by ornate pillars. The magnificent shrine changed into a mosque with the passage of time. And that's why we also encountered domes and arches here. A statue of Bharat Mata was installed here after independence. And today it is known as Bharat Mata Mandir. At the foot of the hill, a number of caves have been cut into the rock face. These provided shelter for Buddhist and Jain monks. This monastic vihar underlines the irony of how the message of peace resonated in the shadow of war here. Very few people recollect that this place has served once as the capital of the country. It was Muhammad bin Tughlaq who issued a dictat that the entire population of Delhi be transferred to Devgiri, and it was he who named this place Dolatabad. To accomplish this task, a road was built over a thousand kilometers long, and for months the people of Delhi suffered on this trail. Tukluk was forced to move back his capital to Delhi after 17 years. But while he lived here, and this place served as the capital of the country, life here was colorful and prosperous. We get an interesting account of those days in the travelogue of Ibn Battuta. The fort stands today as a memorial to Muhammad Shah Tughlaq, who was an eccentric tyrant for many in his lifetime. You see that there are in history mad dreamers and one of them was Tughlaq. He wanted to change the world as he got it. And in that he wanted to bring new reforms, do new things, and he was thought to be a madcap. Here is a man who is not understood in his time because he had a dream and he, they were not satisfied. These are the kind of people who are not satisfied with reality as given. They wanted to change that reality to the extent they could. Sometimes they succeeded, sometimes they did not. This fort was under the control of the Bahmanis in the 15th century. It was a Bahmani Sultan who got the 65 meter tall Chand Minar constructed to celebrate the conquest of Gujarat. Built in the Persian Turkic style, it is the second tallest star in India. Over 33 meters in circumference, the Chand Minar could serve as a watchtower if needed. Different time slots 
in the history same structure same geographic locations and you see the amalgamation of different styles and its impacts This palace is famous as Chini Mahal as in the past its walls were covered with colorful chinese tiles Tanna Shah the last ruler of Golconda was kept here as a prisoner by Mughal emperor Aurangzeb When Aurangzeb captured the fort, he ordered large cannons that could be rotated to fire in all directions to be placed at strategic locations to reinforce its defenses. Daltabad was considered the gateway to the Deccan. and all the sultans of delhi and mughal emperors desired to occupy it aurangzeb spent a very large part of his life here a major attraction for the visitors is a large cannon named Kilae Shikan the wrecker of forts with verses of the holy quran and the name of aurangzeb inscribed on it the mughal emperor aurangzeb had a very special relationship with the fort of daulatabad when a young prince his father shah jahan had appointed him the governor of deccan and it was he who conquered most of these territories for his father and for the mughal empire it was aurangzeb once again who got this great cannon put here on this tower named kila shikan the name of the cannon was itself enough to strike terror in the hearts of the enemies aurangzeb fell in love with this place and wished to be buried here when his time came and close by in khuldabad is his tomb a very plain tomb of a great emperor keeping his memory alive mughal emperor aurangzeb was buried here according to his last wish the beautiful marble screen that surrounds the spartan tomb was added years later by lord curzon you go to aligarh muslim library and on the manuscript section you have a copy of quran which was personally i mean the copying was done by aurangzeb in his own handwriting as you know aurangzeb did not take any money from the state exchequer he he used to tailor these caps and things and earn money and lived a very very austere life the point is that although they were muslims although they were outsiders although they came from a different religion or although they had a zeal to win and perhaps sometimes even a zeal to win even if it is done through lot of killing but they interestingly also played a role in unifying the totally disparate elements of indian polity to bring them together in some ways and to hold them on together in some ways aurangzeb tried to weave india into one political and cultural unit during his long stay in daltabad बड़े बड़े के स्कॉलर्स यहाँ पर आए थे बड़े बड़े ट्रैवलर्स यहाँ पर आए थे पोएट्स यहाँ पर आए थे और उन्होंने इसकी शान में कई बातें लिखी हैं कई कसीदे लिखे हैं मसलियाँ लिखी हैं हज़रत अमीर खुसरो यहाँ आए थे मुबारक शाह खिलजी के दौर में ऐसा कहा जाता है उनके साथ ही वो यहाँ पर आए थे और यहाँ का ख़िला और यहाँ की बस्ती देख के वो बहुत मुतासर हुए और उन्होंने यहाँ की सीन सीनरीज यहाँ के मंजर देख इसको जो है जन्नत कहा था 
कि और उन्होंने ये बात भी कही थी कि यहाँ की हवा जो है आब व हवा या मसीहा है और यहाँ का पानी आब खजर The salubrious climate and prosperity tempted invaders. According to historians, Alauddin Khilji plundered from this place a booty of 600 mons of gold, 700 mons of pearls, 2 mons of diamonds, and precious gems. This wealth allowed him to tilt the scales in his favor and capture the throne of Delhi. Daltabad attracted Mughal Emperor Shah Jahan like a powerful magnet. The Baradari at the top of the fort was built by him. Open pavilions decorated with arches and pillars like this were a characteristic feature of Mughal architecture. Whether you are a student of architecture or you you are a design student for every class of the society this particular work caters to some kind of a visual feast you know everybody is satisfied it's like a it's a cross section of those 800 years you see different styles so beautiful it's like a jungle jungle mein kaise ek ped neem ka hoga ek kisi aam ka hoga ek kisi ka kis cheez ka hoga but by and large jungle looks so beautiful for a common man wo aisa hi hai it's a jungle of architectural styles When this fort was under the occupation of Nizam Shahi Sultans of Ahmednagar they commissioned the Rangeen Mahal Delicate arches and remnants of ornate windows tell the tale of past glory of the ruins that remain of a once beautiful structure ambitious plan has been outlined for the conservation and restoration of the Daltabad fort skilled craftsmen have been invited from far flung places to team up for this task I believe that government cannot do everything. NGOs have a role to play in this. And unless citizens, you know, common citizens associate with these monuments and do something for them, they also chip in. These monuments are not going to be part of our children's lives. Work is underway to give a new lease of life to decaying structures. It is both expensive and fraught with risks. Memories associated with this fort are not restricted to battles, victories and defeats. They also recall tales of prosperity and dividends of peace. Of a time when melody wafted in air and majestic monuments were raised. This fort is a priceless national heritage and to protect it is a duty we can't shirk. <laughs>